finish speaking lov lovingly about the geography department, I guess we can start our lecture today. No laugh. The laughing is unrelated. It's due to another joke that I told earlier on. Okay. So lists and looping. So last week, or last time, I showed you basically all of the operations that we're going to do on lists. And today I'm only going to use one of them, the append operation. I'm going to use append basically over and over again and none of the other ones. I wanted to mention that you can loop over a list in the same way that you could loop over a string. Right, so with a string we could say something like, for every character in the string, print that character. And for lists, um, I can say, so uh, remember that the personal uh, naming convention that I use is that if I have a list of something, I use uh, S to pluralize it, right? So I have one X in a bunch of X's, right? So that, that's why this statement sort of, to me, makes sense. I'm taking one X from a collection of X's. So for X from a collection of N's, X's print X, and I'm just going to step through this, step through the list and print each character one by one. So we're going to go straight into it today. It's only going to, it's going to be mostly me programming in front of you guys. Um, please stop me if I'm going too fast and ask questions. Uh, the first thing I want to do is write a function that removes all val all x's from a list x's. Right, so for example, if I want to remove uh, the character a from abc, that should leave bc. So remember, um, a string is like a list. Right, so that's why I'm including it here. Uh, remove 2 from 1, 2, 2, 3 should give you one three, and remove zero from an empty list should give you empty, right? Removing anything from an empty list should give you empty. Um, notice here that I didn't specify that this is a list of integers or a list of characters or a list of floats, right? Because that would make the, uh, like that would weaken the function. Right? This function is capable of working on any list that you give me, right? So provided that list is a legal list. So I'm not going to type it because I want to leave it arbitrary. Right? I want to take as a large uh, I want to take as many types as possible that are legal. Okay, so I want to remove x. So definition, remove x, this x from this list. Oh boy. And I want to return a list. So I'm going to skip the descriptions today, but I'll still put in some doc string examples. If we want to remove 0 from the empty list, it should be empty. If I want to remove 2 from uh, 0, 2, 2, 3, that should be 0, 3. Okay, so here's two ways of doing it. So I want to accumulate an answer typically. So here's my accumulator, and then I'm going to return the answer. Now, when I accumulate, the accumulator should be the 0 of the data type that you're returning. All right, so in this case, I'm returning a list, so my answer should start accumulating from the empty list. If I was accumulating an integer, I, start, I should start accumulating from 0 generally. So I'm going to accumulate into uh, this answer name, and I'm just going to remove, uh, I'm going to say for y, whoops, for y in x's, if y is not equal to x, then append x to, sorry, append y to the answer, and then return the answer. Let's give that a try. So I have remove x, 2 from 1, 2, 2, 3, great, remove 2, from something that doesn't include twos should re oh that gives me one seven seven three that's perfect remove two from something empty whoop it is empty okay um, this is actually a case where using a while loop would actually be better because what am I doing well I'm just saying really while x is in the list uh, remove it. It's a lot more simple and clear what's happening here. I'm saying, while this is in the list, just take it out, right? So that still works, right? So there's two options. This one's actually nicer, I think. This one's uh, more compact, and anyone who reads it should know what it's doing. Let's talk about range. OK, so this is quite important. So Python, so at the moment, if I said, write me a for loop that does something five times, you don't actually have a way to do that. Um, range is going to be the thing that allows you to do that. So I'm going to give you the general form of range, but I'm going to have to explain something. 
um, new. So there are functions whose arguments can be optional. And we need to somehow have notation for saying something's optional. So this range says range takes at most three arguments and at least one argument. It takes an optional start argument, a non-optional stop argument, and an optional step argument. Right? That's what those square brackets indicate. And yes, it's this is correct, right? Because the comma is also optional, right? If you want the third argument, you need to include a comma and then that argument. So both the name and both the argument and the comma are optional. Range is basically the same as list slicing. Uh, so before I can show you how it works, I have to tell you a little bit about a nuance of range, right? So um, there's range called with the minimum amount of arguments. So if you ask Python for the range of 10, it's going to spit back at you range 10. Right? So if I do this, right, that's not very illuminating. Right? So uh, that at least tells us that the optional start index is default to 0. Right? So we've learned something. The type of range is 10. Ugh, the type of range of 10 is range. Right? So range has its own type. And in order to look at the stuff in range, you can always cast it as a list, right? So if I say, make me a range 10, that's going to be the numbers 0 through 10. Now, why is there a difference between range and list? All right, so I'm going to do a couple of pieces of code here. 4x in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, print x, right? This is, this is a way that you could have, like, done something 10 times, although I didn't include the 0. I can say 4x in range 10, print x. It does the same thing. But notice, range 10 is just a range, right? Can anyone guess as to why range and lists are different things? Uh, Interval is the wrong word for. It. I think you're like heading in the right direction. Okay, so like consider this. If I wanted to, if I wanted to count a billion times, what would creating a list of a billion elements do? Well, it would use up a hell of a lot of memory, right? Just to enable you to count something. Range is special. Range is a list, but the only thing that list can do is tell you what the next member is. So uh, it has no memory, and it only ever holds one number. Right, so you say, range, what's the next thing I should do? One. Okay, what's the next thing I should do? Two. What's the next thing I should do? Three. Uh, what was the thing you told me three steps ago? Well, I don't know. I forgot. Right, the, well, it will. Like that, it, this is called lazy computation. Right, it's, just, it's going to compute the thing that you want when you need it and then forget it immediately. Um, so that's why we have to list ranges to see it. Right, but it's... Uh, uh. Oh, I forgot to actually include something. Oh, there we go. Okay, so, but how does range work s precisely? Right, so I can do range um, 0 to 7 and step by 2. Okay, so I'm going to have to list all of these ranges just so we can see what they print. 0, 2, 4, 6. Okay, what does this look like? Okay, so I'm going to make this special list where the... Elements are at their index, right? And so x's at 4 is 4. Okay, so notice this. So I have x's. I have this. Oh, shoot. I have that, those x's. I have that list range. And now I'm going to slice x's from 0 to 7 by 2. See how they're the same? Range is the same as a list slice except range is just going to return to you the actual indexes of slicing. Right? So if I did x's, if I went from 9 to 2 and 9 to 2 and counted by minus 2, so this is going to give me what? 9, 7, 5, 3, and that's it. Okay. And I'm conjecting, conjecturing? I'm guessing. <laughs> 
that this should be the same, right? 9 to 2 by minus 2, 9, 7, 5, 3. Okay. So if you understand list slicing, you, you naturally understand ranges, right? It's just allowing us to count from, an, from some start point to some end point and using some step size, some increment. Uh, that's not useful. Okay, so what I want to do now to strengthen our understanding of range is to write range without using the range operation. So I'm just going to go over here uh, from typing import list so I can use it. I think I wanted to define something called list range. I want to go from A, which is an integer, to B, which is an integer, and use the step size C, and return a list of integers. Okay. So list range, uh, maybe 0, uh, 3 to 9 by 2. That should be 3, 5, 7. Uh, list range of 10 to 5 by minus 3 should be 10 and 7, I believe. Okay. How can we do this? All right, so I want to accumulate an answer. What should my base accumulator be? What should I start accumulating on? What am I building here? I'm building a list of integers. So I should start accumulating from what exactly? List of integers. Empty list. Yeah, yeah. So the that saying zero is correct, right? The zero for the empty for lists is empty. The empty list. So I'm going to start accumulating from the empty list. Return that answer. And what do I want to accumulate? Well, what should I use here? A for or a while? Like, how would you do this if I gave this to you on a midterm? You should be able to do something like this if I gave it to you on a midterm. What's the first thing that should be printed? Or what's the first thing that should be appended to the list? <laughs> what if I said what is the um, what is the range from A, B to C? Right? Now we have to think like mathematicians. This is going to be, if I list this, what's here? What's the next thing? You said the first one so confidently. Yeah? yeah, good. And the next one? Yeah, and we keep going uh, until we are uh, until this passes B, right? So at some point, A plus KC is going to be greater than B, and we stop there, right? So that's that's out. Okay. So knowing that, what is the first thing that gets appended to this list and answer? A, okay, so I'm going to do this, okay? I'm going to say this is the thing that we're going to append. So the first thing we're going to append is an A. So in here I'm going to uh, append my A. Uh, nope, yes, I'm going to append what I'm appending. Okay, so I have a, an answer that I'm accumulating and something that I'm going to append. Okay, so what, while the thing that I'm appending is less than C, I'm, I'm okay to go. Ah, not C, B, the right endpoint. Yeah. Um, what one thing is missing here? Right, what's the, so if the first thing I append is A, what's the next thing I should append? A plus C, right? So that's going to be what I'm appending plus equal C. So that should work. Uh, list range, one, two, what were the examples that I had? Three, nine, two. 392, 357, and I had 10, 5, oh, this is not going to work. <laughs> this is broken. Yeah, so I actually didn't write this correctly. <laughs> so I'm going to change my doc string to like not have negative steps. So this should be 0. Yeah, um, so the problem here is you have to know which way you're heading, right? So if I outstep this way, or if I outstep this way, that, that's going to be a different condition, right? So I want you guys to fix my, my list range so that it works for negative indexes. I did, the, I did the positive steps. I want you to fix it for negative steps. Right, so that's a little bit of homework over the weekend. So uh, range is quite useful when paired with for loops. In fact, range is basically ex exclusively used in for loops. 
because um, you want to be able to say stuff like this, right? For i in okay, so like this is this is like C syntax. Right? In C, you'd make an array maybe. You'd have an array, and you'd say something like for i in range length of x's, print x's of i. Right? This is a very C or Java style loop. Now the Pythonic version of this is this. Right? I think the second one is better, right? Like this is much more clear than this maybe. But th this is what a ra range is allowing you to do, to use these more classical style C Java type of loops. Because there even is times in Python when you're really going to need to do this messy type of index arithmetic, right? Especially when you're doing uh, operations on matrices and stuff like that. Write a function which takes two integers of uh, write a function which takes two integer lists of equivalent length and returns their dot product. Do you guys remember what the dot product is? Scalar product? Is there at least one person who doesn't remember what the dot product is? Liars! <laughs> so you take two vectors. You guys know what vectors are in mathematics? If you want to take the dot product, it's the you take the product of the of the first elements of the vectors, then you add the product of the second element, then you add the product of the third, and you continue until you're done. Okay, so I'll make this more clear as I write my doc string example. But I want to make a definition for the dot product. Uh, I'm going to take two lists. One's going to be a list of integers. The other one is also going to be a list of integers. This is going to return a what? Int. Good. Uh, okay, so if I take the dot product of 3, 4, 5, or 2, 4, 5, I guess, and 6, 0, 0, 2, oh my god. Okay, what am I going to get? So I'll, I'll type it out. This is going to be equal to 2 times 6 plus 4 times 0 plus 5 times 2. So that's 12 plus 10. That should be 22. Do a simpler one, maybe dot product of 2, 5, and 0 minus 2 should be what? That's 2 times 0 plus 5 times minus 2, which is minus 10. OK. Let's accumulate an answer and return it. What's my return type? Int. My return type is int. Not a trick question. Right, so if my return type is int, what should I start counting my accumulator from? Zero. Okay. So now I want to actually uh, write a C style loop, right? Because I need the index now to say I want to multiply two things at that index. So I'm going to say 4k in range length of x. Right, so do you see how this range is going to generate all the indexes for x? It's going to generate 0, 1, 2, all the way up to the length of x is minus 1. So what do I want to do here? Right? I want to accumulate on answer. And what am I accumulating? Um, y index 0. Y index 0. No, 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 not index 0. Index k, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big difference. Big difference. Um, so there we go, right? I'm accumulating the product of the list element at the k position, right? As I described. So let's give this a try. What's up? Did it on purpose just to see that you guys are paying attention. Good job. You passed my test. You, and you get no marks for passing that test. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Dot product, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Should be 4 plus 10 is 14 plus 18 is 32. Hooray, I can add. Uh, let's try 0. I like zeros. All right, minus 7, 5. Minus 7. Perfect. OK. So I wrote a simple dot product routine. Um, 
this is not how you'd write the dot product routine in uh, Python. There's like way more Pythonic ways of doing this, which I can't show you. But I wish I could, because it's super cool. Right? You guys are missing so much. <laughs> I can give you a little sample of what I want to show you uh, by doing this question. So I want to write a function which returns a list of the first k squares. Right, so now I can ask you questions which like specifically ask you to generate k number of stuff, right, since you can count through k. So let's generate the first k squares. This bothered my other class somehow, I don't understand why. So um, the first zero squares is empty, right, there's zero squares in the empty list. The first four squares are zero squared, one squared, two squared, three squared, right, zero, one, four, nine. Are you guys perplexed or troubled by this? Good, you're the better class. Hear that section one? Uh, okay, so let's write this. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to teach you how, how I think through these things. So d define uh, k squares. Let's take k, which is an integer. What am I returning? Of, of integers, okay. k squares at uh, zero should be an empty list k squares at th 4 should be the first 4 squares, which is 0, 1, 4, and 9. Okay. I want to accumulate something and return that accumulation. What is my return type? List of integers. So what should I start accumulating from? Empty list. Perfect. Okay, so what do I want to do here? I, say, I want to say 4, um, let's say x in range of the length, oh, of range of k. So I'm going to count 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to k minus 1. And from answer, I just want to append the square of k. So let's give this a look. Uh, did I call it k squares? Yes. 3? No, that's definitely not right. OK, so let's go into debugging mode. What have I done? I used k and not x, which is the counting variable. All right, well, I fail. Marcus. That Marcus guy, he's a dick. Uh, okay, uh, k squares, perfect. k squares, 10. All right, let's see how far I can go before my computer starts, like, saying, nah. Oh, wow, okay. I did not expect that. Okay, so who cares? Um, so this is the thing I wanted to show you that's cooler. I can generate this like this. L is a list which takes... Um, uh, L is x squared for x in range 5. Boom. Generated in one line. Right? This is called list comprehension. I love list comprehension. Right? This allows you to build stuff so quickly it's crazy. Right? Uh, once you guys start learning the other functional commands like map, zip, fold, you can write incredibly sophisticated programs in a few lines. Um, you're probably more familiar with this than you think, right? Because I believe that in high school you've been using set builder notation um, despite not being told that this was called set builder notation, right? So I imagine most of you would be comfortable with a statement like this, right? The set k squared such that k is in the natural numbers generates an infinite set of the squares, right? In Python, we just have that basically equivalent. Except that we don't write such that. I wish we could write such that, but it's more appropriate to write a four because what's actually happening in that list is like a mini loop. Right? So you can generate list very quickly using this set comprehension. And then you can loop through the set comprehensions or you can do pretty crazy things. You can have multiple fours in lists. So I can do something like, oh, this is going to be so screwy. X times Y for X in range 5 for Y in range... Or this should generate the multiplication table, basically. Yeah. So you can do some pretty, don't, uh, don't be scared if you can't understand this stuff. This, this is already an advanced topic. I just wanted to show you that this list comprehension exists so you could play with it. OK, so let's continue. So the other class managed to come up with three solutions to this problem. Let's see how many you can come up with. Write a function which disassembles a string into a list of characters. Right, so if I want to disassemble the empty string, that's going to disassemble it to the empty list. If I want to disassemble the string a, b, c, d, e, f, that's going to disassemble it into the individual characters a, b, c, d, e, f as a list. So 
I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to spell disassemble properly. Disassemble uh, this character string. What am I going to return? List of what? String. Yeah. So I want to disassemble uh, the empty string that goes to the empty list. I want to disassemble a, b, c, and it's going to return. I hate doing this. A, B, C. OK. Let's do it the obvious way. So I'm going to accumulate an answer. My return type is a list of strings, so my accumulator should begin at empty list. And then I'm going to return the answer. I'm going to say for C in C's, simply append C to the answer. Right. This is the simplest version. Well. Simplest by some definition. String is not defined. Oh, there we go. Right. Uh, disassemble empty. Disassemble ABC. Cool. OK, that's one way. Uh, give me another way. List comprehension. The thing I just taught you a minute ago that you've already forgot. I'm doing great today. How would the list comprehension look? Anyone? Well, think about it mathematically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. All right. See how that works? I just want to build the list x for x in the c's, right? So it's a set builder, right? Also works. One more. Anyone have an idea? Hmm? Well, we, we could use a while loop. OK, I can do one with a while loop. Uh, while, this may be confusing. OK. <laughs> Here, here's how you can do it with a while loop. It's maybe a little bit less elegant, but I can say um, while sees, right, I, I have a full list. Take my answer and append to it. Oh boy. <laughs> Remember I taught you pop last last week? So I'm going to pop the thing from the end. It's going to come out. This is going to repeat until C's is empty, at which case the while loop is going to stop. And then I just have to return the uh, reverse of the list. Right? <laughs> That's another way of doing it. <laughs> String object has no attribute pop. Oh, I can't pop a string. <laughs> All right, shut her down, shut her down, abandon. Um, this is the last way that I was looking. All right, you can just cast uh, uh, this as a list, right? Well, don't ignore the simplest solution, right? This is perfectly valid and probably the best way of doing it. So, I've learned a lesson. Like generally. But the general uh, philosophy when programming is program as little yourself as possible. Because so, like, I bet if you were like, oh, I want to do the dot product operation, it's probably the case that there's some poor PhD student who has dedicated like nine years of his life to making that dot product operation like 0.1% faster. Right? So given that you're not going to spend nine years of your life making that optimization, use it. Right? Numpy, SciP, all of the imported libraries are most likely going to be better than the stuff that you're writing. Right, so remember, when I say be lazy as a programmer, it's not a negative thing. Laziness is a good thing among programmers. Let your parents know that, that you have a professor who's encouraging laziness. When you go home and your parents are like, wash the dishes, you're like, my professor told me I'm not allowed. Right? <laughs> OK, nested lists. Let's see if we can get to matrix multiplication, because I was not able to in the other class. So. This is crucially important for your next assignment. Okay? It is the case that you can put a list in a list. Why not? Right? I never specified that the elements of a list had to be constants. So if I set up this list, um, the length of this list is 2, right? because it's a list containing two lists. The length of one of the list's elements, the last one, for example, is 3. Okay, so given this, I'm going to test you in the compiler here. So let's take x's. I'm going to make a list of lists. So here's a list. I'm going to make lists of 
three lists. The first list is going to be one, two. This is going to be three, four, five. And this one's going to be six, seven, and another list. Okay? You see that? We're all good? Okay. What is x's at one? Three, four, five. Right? Zero indexing, everyone. Zero indexing. Don't forget that. Those are throwaway marks on your midterm for not remembering zero indexing. What is x's at 1 at 0? 3, right? What is x's at 1, 0? <laughs> Does, no, it can't, OK? This is a trick. It's a trap, OK? <laughs> um, this is how you do list indexes in, with arrays in C and in Java, right? We don't have this capability on lists, right? The only reason this is working is exactly because what I stated. So we have x's. X's at 1 returns a list. And because it's returning a list, that list is indexable, right? So this is a series of, of asking for lists and indexing into that list. This isn't having a matrix and saying, I want this position. For that, you really do need matrix, right? I think the NumPy library provides that, right? So you can access, OK, so final test. The last member of x's, uh, and I want, OK, so the second member of x's, the last member of that, and the zeroth member of that. I shouldn't have isolated exactly one number in three embedded lists. It sort of gives away the answer. But we can deconstruct this. Why is this 9? Well, because the list that happened before was this. The list that happened before that was this. Right? So again, we're just like accessing deeper and deeper levels of the list. But you can't do so directly for good technical reason, which I can't tell you about because spoilers. Um, so recall, so we can nest lists. And we could also nest loops, right? So if I gave you a list of lists and asked you to do something on each member of the list, you would have to use two for a loop. So for example, I say, here's a list of lists. Uh, X is a super list, which is comprised of the list 1, 2, and the list A, B, C, and the list hello. And I want to say, print out individually every member of this list of lists. Or you'd have to go into it twice, right? So this is why I like this type of notation. So this will become more clear for, from this question. I somehow screwed up the question statement, but I'll state it now. Suppose we have a group of students, and the students are all uniquely identified by a number, a student number. I then take the group of students and I divide them into teams, and then I want to check that every member of every team is an enrolled student. So I'm going to write this. Definition, and I'm going to show you how beautiful Python is. Definition, enrolled teams. What I want to do is I want to take teams, which is a list of a list of integers. Whoops. Integer. And I want to take the list of enrolled students. Students, which is a list of integers. And what am I returning? Boolean, perfect. Mm, okay, well, maybe I'll do this. Okay, so this is how this should work. So if I'm asking, so I need to make some teams. So this is a list of teams, so a list of lists. And suppose the teams are uh, 1 and 6, uh, 2 and minus 5, which is a crazy student number. 9 and uh, 2. Okay, I never said no, no person could be on two teams. But I do say that every member has to be an enrolled student. So this is minus 5, 1, 2, 6, 9. Okay, this should return true. But if I do this and say I take minus 5 out of the enrolled students, then this should be false. Okay, now I'm going to show you how nicely this can be done in Python. Okay, so work, if you were to do this in C or Java, I'd need at least two counting index variables, right? And I'd need to set up at least 
two for loops that are walking against the length of the list. You're going to lose so much information. This is how you do this pythonically and is really dem demonstrating why this language is so beloved, right? Watch. For a team in teams and for a student in that team, if the student is not in the enrolled students, return false. Else, well not else, if you finish that, return true. That's it. Right? It reads like a sentence. It read, anyone could read this and understand it, basically. Right? The meaning of this would totally be lost in C and Java. Because right? you'd have to say, why am, why am I indexing? Why am I counting to this? Beautiful, in my opinion, this type of, lang this type of language. So this, this should work. I'm speaking so highly of it without even testing it. Okay, so I want enrolled students, enrolled teams, sorry, and I'm just going to grab my doc string here. Great. And if I take minus 5 out, that should be false. Great, right? But this, this is what you should strive for. You should strive to write snippets of code that l make it obvious what's happening, right? Don't use indexes, right? But just because you're used to using them with C and Java, switch to the Pythonic way of doing this it's because it's better. It's obviously better, right? At least at your level, um, you should want to do it this way rather than the other way. Okay, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do this today or not. Okay, I just want to mention, okay, I'm going to tell you how a matrix is represented. I'm going to ask you to do something over the weekend, and I'm going to do one more uh, example here. So, you guys were introduced to matrices in high school, hopefully. Okay, so a matrix is basically just a way for us to collect mathematical constants, right? So this is the 0, 0 position, 1, 0 position, 2, 0 position, and so on. So this, we usually represent matrices as a list of rows. So this matrix has row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So first row, second row, third row, right? And all the rows have to have equivalent length um, because you can't have variable number of columns. OK, so given this representation of a matrix, um, I want you to write a function which returns the transpose of this matrix. Do you know what the transpose is? You have to invert the rows and columns. Harder than you may think. I had some difficulty doing this. It's trivial with a matrix, because you just have to permute the, the indexes. But you don't have indexing, indexing here. Right? So you have to think about it, how you, how you would construct this. And then on Monday, I'm going to, we're going to do this. We're going to define the multiplication of two matrix. So make sure you know how to do that. Finally today, I just want to do this one. Why don't we write a, a piece of code that uh, creates a matrix of the multiplication table? Right, so you guys remember the multiplication table? Oh, look, I have a table. All right, so you have numbers across the top, numbers across the side. So this is 0 times 0, 0 times 1, 0 times 2. This is going to be 1 times 0. 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, and so on. 2 times 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Right, so this is the multiplication table. Remember elementary school, 2 times 4 was 8. Right. I still let students bring this to their exams when they're not permitted calculators. So you're not allowed a calculator, but you can bring a multiplication table. And they do. Um, OK, so let's write this. OK, I have a few minutes. Yeah, at least bring a slide ruler and well, one of you guys should try to bring an abacus to like your calculus test. See what happens. You said no calculators, but I have an abacus. Right? Uh, multiplication table. Let's see how fast I can do this. So I want to take n, which is an integer. I want to return a list of list of integers uh, for i in range n. For j in range n, I want to. Okay, so this is more difficult, right? I have to. Ha my answer is going to be a list of lists. So I want to generate these things row by row. Okay, so I want to generate a single row, and that row is going to be constructed like this. I can't give too much explanation because class is over in a bit. Uh, 
but maybe you can study it when you go home. So this will generate the multiplication table row by row. Uh, oh, I have to append the row to answer. There we go. So let's just give this a try. I didn't put a colon. Yeah, that's the 3 by 3 multiplication table. That's a 10 by 10 multiplication table. So there's a the multiplication table, and I'm just going to say 4 row in here. Oh, print the row so it can just look a little bit more nice. There you go, there's a the multiplication table. Anyways, you study the listings from today, you do the labs, and remember, matrix transpose for Monday so we can do matrix multiplication. Have a good weekend. Be safe so I can see you on Monday.